She's a retired teacher, mother, leader in the community, parliamentarian, women's rights advocate, and champion for the elderly. She is Dame Maisie Barker Welch. Her service to this country began long before even most knew her name. It started right here in Clifton Hills, St. Thomas, near the parish of St. Joseph, a community close to her heart, even though life in the country did take some getting used to. We were St. Michael people, so to speak. And when my father became the principal, uh, they called it headmaster, you know, the headmaster of a school in the country, of course, we moved from St. Michael to St. Thomas. And the difference was really starting for us children because the people, you know, the country people, I, at that time I did not know that you, you could walk about without shoes. But that was the, the country village. People walked around without shoes. And so we had to adjust to all, well, all that was happening there, daddy, my mother, Came up, we went up there with about five of the children. The others were born up there. And so we got into it. It was a very interesting country setting where the church was the main um, building, the main in, in that area. Because in those days, the churches had control of the schools. And so every Wednesday, we would go into the church and for a service with school children. And my father, as headmaster, had to work in the church. We, we became Moravians because it was a Moravian church at Clifton Hill. She taught several subjects, such as Spanish and dressmaking, at a number of schools, including St. Bernard's, St. Gabriel's, and Codrington High. As Dame Maisie's father was a teacher, and also two of her aunts, there was no wonder why she too had a passion for teaching. My father, I sat at his feet whilst he was teaching people, and he taught them for free. Because all of that, my father, my father was a great community worker, and that is, I think, what inspired me about politics, because I think I always thought it was about helping people and communities. I use my knowledge of piano whenever I am teaching. I use my knowledge of piano to let the children learn the songs in the, in the Spanish language and so on. A graduate of the University of the West Indies and Carleton University, this past president of the Royal Commonwealth Society has a passion for education and encourages involvement at every level. The present president of the Commonwealth Society is doing quite a lot. I, I'm sure you saw the Christmas trees, but you know that involves the children? Did you know that involves the children? Yes, I the trees, the the Yes, the children from the, uh, the various elementary, primary schools they call them now, you know. In my day they call it elementary schools. Primary school, the children, and they're, they're very creative. And so that is uh, that's one of our um, projects. Also a former president of the National Committee on Aging, Dame Maisie continues to push for the rights of the elderly. We are an aging society. Do you know we had the second, I think the second oldest person in the world? Yes, Mr. Sisnet. And the a Jap a Japanese was the first, is the oldest, and he was the second oldest. And so um, we, there is a policy where government is um, intending to make it better for the aged because they do suffer, like everywhere else, they do suffer some form of abuse. And um, we investigate, um, um, and with the help of the National Assistance Board, the National Assistance Board, we work, the aging committee works with the National Assistance Board because they go out to houses and help people who are not able to do the various things in the house. So that is part of it. She's also been president of the Inter-American Commission of Women, which is concerned with women's rights and gender equality in the Americas. I was also 
the president for two years of the Inter-American Commission of Women. Do you know that? It is called CIM, C-I-M, because it's the Spanish Comisión Interamericana de Mujeres, um, a, a women's group. And it, all the p women of the OAS, all the OAS countries come together in Washington. And I was president of that body when we worked out violence against women, which ended up in every territory having to debate it in the House and pass the Violence Against Women Act. So that I was very happy that I was part of that. The dame who has served as parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Labor and also in the Ministry of Women's Affairs lends her support to new movements in the Caribbean, such as Life in Leggings. To every cry in the night so that no one could hear, to every face buried in pillows to hide the tears, to every note the enemy has tried to choke. Break your silence. For a very long time, women suffered in silence. And um, now everything is coming out in the open. And all governments everywhere, all over the world, the women are trying to influence some of the legislation, um, which makes it a crime for people to harass and so on. So um, I am hoping that this, this, this organization does very well. The former president of the Business and Professional Women's Club takes after her aunt, who was a dressmaker, as well as her uncle, who was a master tailor. Born in September 1927, from as early as her days at the St. Michael School, she was making clothes for her siblings. In those days, needlework, needleworkers had girls, they called them girls, and they would have about five or six girls in the house training them how to do clothes. Because you see, in those days, the, you didn't have the machines with the zigzag and so on. So the women had to learn how to oversaw the seams. And the, the, be the, 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 the better dressmaker you are, the better your seams, all your seams. So I grew up being able to do that before there was these fancy machines. This is the last dress that Dame Maisie made about 10 years ago, and she still has it in pristine condition. People would say, but wait, she's over 50. What, 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 what does she want Parliament? What does she want to go into Parliament for? But that is just the beginning of life. And so I, I did my teaching. I did my dressmaking. And so I... I decided I would try my hand at politics. And it was a wonderful experience. As you know, I represented, you might not know this, I represented the constituency of St. Joseph. St. Joseph is a wonderful parish. For all of the school children that I went to school with in Clifton Hill came either from the village in Clifton Hill or from St. Joseph. So I knew of that. And then my father was the principal of Gratney Adams Secondary School. I mean, St. Joseph was like, and I, and, and I never thought that there was anything that I couldn't do because people were saying, how could you go in that parish where the other party had held for years, it, it was as though the parish, the constituency belonged to them. I said, huh? Have you ever had that one friend who was everything to you? That's exactly what Venice Morris is to Dame Maisie. Friend, former student, and even secretary. I met Dame Maisie in 1984, when she was um, seeking to be a candidate in the 1986 general elections. At that time, like, while canvassing, you know, going to homes, she see a need of young people needing help. 
to do something to help themselves. So as we walk around, because first I took up the mantle when I saw her because I had loved her. So I took up the mantle and I used to go along with her. So then she decided, well, saying that it was so many young people, she decided to do some classes, you know, like cottage industry. First, she formed an organization called St. Joseph Community Action Group, in which I was the president at one time. So the first thing she introduced was Kekulsen, and then it went on to crochet, knitting, um, food preserves, and then flower arranging. This is one of the arrangements that was done by me. It's done with um, satin ribbon, sheer ribbon, um, large carnations, daisies, prams, baby breath, and leather leaf. While some people wait until they have retired, this mother of four has always loved gardening and encouraged her children to appreciate the great outdoors. We all learn how to do things. We, we grew leeks and artichokes and all those sort of things that people don't know much about. When they were little, we used to go on picnics like say every two months. We'd all be in the car and go some part of Barbados, but we took everything, we took the tablecloth and everything and we made sure that when, when we sat to eat at a park or a forest or something, that when at the end of it, the place had to look the same way how we found it. Dame Maisie Irene Barker Welch has seen many accomplishments. She won the seat in St. Joseph in 1986, was awarded the Barbeo Centennial Honor in 2000, the Companion of Honor Barbados in 2008, and appointed Dame Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire in 2014. However, she believes her biggest accomplishment has been raising a family. My eldest son, I think most of you would know him as Professor Emeritus Pedro Welch. Yes, and then my daughter, Sonia, she's just retired from the civil service and um, a language specialist. And then the next daughter, she is an expert on tra fitness training. She works for a gym. And my last son, he lives in Switzerland with his four children. And I was very pleased to be able to have seen them in October last year. Yes. So, so my, my family life, and of course I had a husband at that time, but you know, in those days, men did not kind of busy themselves with any house chores as these gentlemen here know. No, no, no. So, you know, it was um, the, the mother who had to do the, like, the housewifery things and so on. But he was very close with them from the time they were born. You know, there's some, some guys cannot really adjust to a, a little baby, but from the time the baby is born, my husband was there. And at night, sometimes if they wanted to cry or so, he put them on his chest and lay down there. And the ch he really was very close to the children. A mother, a teacher and friend, Dame Maisie inspires us all to live and breathe our passions. So let's get out there and do just that. I'm Sheila Morrell. Thanks for watching.